Thursday, it's the ABC of CBD with the great Mr. Oliver Mammon. I'm Russ Kane. This is coming at you live uh, from London, and it's going out all over the world. And we'll just wait till you hear where our special guest is coming live from. It's amazing. Uh, you're listening to Men's Radio Station. We're available on Twitter. You can watch us on our YouTube channel. We're on Facebook. Uh, the only place we aren't is on Perseverance on the Mars rover. But apart from that, I think we're just about absolutely everywhere. Uh, before Ollie kicks off, I just wanted to say a huge thank you um, for all the wonderful comments that we get from all over the world about this show. I really appreciate it. I never dreamed it would be so popular. It's all down to Ollie. I'm just a passenger here you learning happen, probably man. along along with you guys. Um, this is week 21, 22? 22. 22. Twenty week twenty two and they said it wouldn't last. So I'm hugely excited. Thank you. As ever, let's go over to the CBD guru, the mix master extraordinaire, and I call him that the mixologist. It's because I like cocktails. Ollie Mammon. Hey, how you doing? Uh, thank you for everyone who's tuned in over the last twenty two weeks. Uh, we have an awesome episode for you guys here today, or at least I hope it will be awesome. Uh, I think it will be awesome. Uh, the over the last three, four weeks, we've discussed uh, farming in, in, in the UK and Europe and, you know, producing a CBD extract and farming hemp and the laws around it. And we met uh, George from George Botanicals from uh, Sativa Wellness Group, who told us all about, uh, you know, his processes and what he's doing with farming in Europe and trying to bring an extract to the UK and how it's how there are still laws which make it very difficult unless you're GMP compliant. However, there's still a lot of CBD products on the market, and most of our extracts are sourced from America. So today, that's what we've done. Uh, before I dive headfirst into the episode, because I can literally, I could do that. Let's just get a quick word from our sponsor, then I'll give my introduction, and then we'll go from there. I'm sure you've heard before that good quality CBD needs to be really, really expensive. This is the new view of CBD, a product created by users for users. A product at an affordable price, available everywhere, at any time, at the simple click of a button. Just CBD and MCT oil. No additives, no preservatives, and no flavor enhancers. It's a simple subscription-based service. The cleanest possible CBD delivered to your door for the lowest possible price. Your product, your rights, for the lowest possible price. My favorite part of that is a little doorbell. I love that. Ding dong. <laughs> but seriously, guys, sign up to the Tincture Club. You've yeah. got a, a QR code here you can scan. We'll take you straight to the page. Uh, when you do go, remember to type in Men's Radio 10 and you get 10% off your first purchase. And it really is a great product. We've had some fantastic responses from it. Uh, you know, Many of the listeners have used it. Loads of people are trying it out. And it really is an affordable and accurate and reliable product and you know you should give it a go because you know if you're tr thinking about trying cbd it's uh the house blend so you know <laughs> it's free to... i'm gonna say that i was just about to mention uh one of our listeners eve phantom crazy name crazy gal and eve i know that went on for, to the tincture club and she bought some bath bombs from you guys and absolutely loves them chrissy holt over in spain was having problems sleeping she, um, you know, she said, what should I do? I said, talk to Ollie, get some stuff, see how it goes. Sleeping like a baby now. So thank and thank you, Eve, for, uh, Eve, for joining us. That's absolutely wonderful. Ollie, back to you. But it's just, it's not just words. You know, these, these products really are that good. The quality is that excellent. And as Ollie says, use the QR. It's a QR code. Look at me. Yeah. Get me. I'm so down with the kids. Just scan it uh, with use your phone. QR. Yeah, scan it. And you get 10 You mentioned Men's Radio 10. Get 10% off. Boom. Yeah, off to the races. Okay. So, yeah, like I was saying, over the last few weeks, we've discussed growing hemp and manufacturing cannabinoid extracts in the UK and how it's a very controlled, limited market. You can't, you know, Jamie Bartley was telling us that you can grow hemp here, but you can't actually extract anything from it. So what a lot of people do in Europe is they'll grow their hemp in Europe and ship it off to America or ship off to a country where extraction is legal. Uh, the, the guest we have today, a guy called Chris Stubbs, he comes from, he comes from Kentucky. Uh, his company is called Jen Kenna. Uh, over the last seven, eight years, uh, Jen Kenna has been a very stable supplier of, of, of extracts to the UK. Now, let me tell you a little story. Seven years ago, five, six, seven years ago, six years ago, I went to America. I went to go visit my brother. My brother was living in LA at the time. And when I went out to LA, uh, I was in my buddy's shop and he comes up to me, he goes, no, check out these products. Someone's just giving me blah, 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 and puts a lip balm in front of me. 
And I remember I'm looking at this lip balm and I just basically saw something. I saw a different application for cannabinoids than I'd seen previously. I'd seen something which has almost a multi-purpose use. It could be used at different things. It kind of got my brain working. Uh, over the course of that trip, I met uh, a few people, you know, and my eyes kind of got open to the world of CBD and, you know, like understanding it a bit more. Of course, I'd heard about it, but I mean, just understanding it more. When I got back from America, I reached out to my brother. I was like, look, I need to get my hands on some of that. You know, I reckon I could make those products. You know, I reckon I can make something similar or better. I can't seem to find anything. You know, the biggest issue was at six, five, six years ago was finding a product that actually worked for me. It was finding something which was reliable and accurate and consistent. And I couldn't find that. Still to this day, a lot of people are having trouble finding it. I just have myself, which makes my life a hell of a lot easier. Now, the first extracts I ever used were made by my guest today. Now, this is all just kind of like this was all, this all came out in our little conversation, you know, like our pre show conversation. You know, how long have you been at the company for? When did you start? What were you doing? Blah, blah, blah. You know, like I because you know, companies have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of employees. You know, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes you just get someone, you don't get the right one. And it's, it's pretty awesome that, you know, Chris has been. You know, Chris is a real scientist. You know, he's been involved in this industry for like 20 years, but he's been with Jen Kenner for like six, seven. And like I said, my original products, the first products I ever designed, the first capsules, the first tinctures, the first body oils, bath bombs, lotions, creams I ever made were using an extract that Chris made. And I don't know, there's something quite romantic there. You know, like I'll be honest with you, it's, it's made me a little bit more nervous for the show. I don't know what it is. It's just made it a little bit more... I think mean, synergies like this kind I of. I'll tell you what it is. He's American, and if you piss him off, he'll invade your house. That's mean. Don't be rude, That's Russ. It. Russ. That is. Russ. That is a fact. I'm that the one who fact. makes inappropriate comments. You're not allowed to. You, you're you're the balancer. You're supposed to hold this ball oh, down, okay. man. I just wondered why you were nervous. He seems like we were chatting before the show. He seemed just an absolutely lovely no, guy. Not nervous in that way, but it's kind of like it brings back a whole bunch of memories. It's like you know, I'm I'm sitting on a show now, seven years down the line. I'm about to have a guest who is the guy who made the extracts that I first started this journey on with. There's something quite romantic there. You know, there's, it's like well, it's, a, it's beautiful synergy. That's what it is. It's beautiful synergy. So let me carry is. on my introduction anyway, before I sorry my little tangent. So basically Chris Stubbs uh, over the last seven years has basically helped Jen Kenner uh, create this reliable, consistent extract, which has given them the, a formidable market position which they have in the UK and it which has given manufacturers like myself the ability to provide end users like yourselves the products which you are so reliant on now the products which you find to be consistent and reliable and the ones which you know will work for you week on and week out they usually have a backbone which is stronger than the manufacturer you know like with with me, I've got companies like Jen Kenner behind me and, you know, who supply me the extracts, which enable me to supply you the products, which are great. And there's this this pyramid, do you know what I mean? Like in the foundation of every incredible product out there is a farm. The role of every farm in this marketplace, the role of every farm out there producing cannabinoids is to produce a reliable, consistent cannabinoid. OK, it's not it's all well and good just growing hemp and creating an extract but you need to be able to create the same extract over and over and over again so your customers can provide the same products that their end users over and over and over again so chris like i said has been doing this for a very long time he's responsible for billions and billions of milligrams of cbd you know like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kilos which have you know which which the world has consumed chris is responsible for the manufacture of those and you know like I, I, it's just it, it, it's, it's an incredible role it's an incredible incredible wow sorry um it, it's an incredible thing when you think about it that you know you have only few of these companies and as a manufacturer i could tell you there are only few farms who are operating on this level and there are only few farms who can provide this consistency and you know there aren't that many there, there aren't that many suppliers of, of of this sort of extract and you know with pending novel food and you know potential reclassification about cannabinoids and a general unsteady uncertain unreliable market anyway it's mm. nice to know that you've got something which is reliable amidst all of this 
chaos, you could say. And it's nice to know you've got someone, you know, something which you as end users and me as a manufacturer can rely on in a market that is so fragile and so ever changing and, you know, and a market which faces so many hurdles that, you know, it's it's actually crazy how many people come and go from this industry and you know how much inconsistency there is so you know like like the the topic of today is is bringing a consistent compliant product extract to the uk market and let's bring out chris Stubbs and, and start what i'd like him. to do ollie because I've, I've been in this game since 1984 and i've never been able to say this live from kentucky never been able to say that before Ah, nice one, Russ. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, Chris. <laughs> I think I think Ollie got a bit over him. got emotional there, Chris. It's, a, it's like there are stories you coming got, up. Yeah, you know, you, seven you years. know, you got you got emotional there because I think you've seen. Uh, I'm not going to do psych on you, but I think you saw how far you've gone from just having a notion to where you are now, which I think is just a fabulous thing. It's, Fact, it's been a long well, that's time. Not, that's, another, that's another story. Another story for a different that's thing. Another story. <laughs> hey, Chris, welcome to the show, man. What I love you is you're around the corner. Chris Stubbs is in, is, is in Kentucky, and he looks like the picture's fantastically clear. You see? There it's American go. know-how for you. <laughs> every every time, I'll every time. The house, no devices for this hour. <laughs> we can be right. clear as day. It, well, it is clear. It's fantastic. It's as clear as the as the uh, as the Mars picture. You've got to so love that. Congratulations yard. on that. What a feat of genius that is. Anyway, Ollie, back to you. So, Chris, welcome to the show. Sorry for my over emotional introduction. I really do apologise. It's just sometimes things get me. Okay, and I think that was just one of those moments. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, you know, like, thank you very much for supplying us with extract and. I'm just going to fire questions at you because I feel like your brain is something they need to hear. So let's just start. Always my first question. How did you get involved in this industry? Mm. It's a loaded question, Ollie, but uh, it really comes from the pursuit of science is, is number one top of mind, right? I started as a scientist, um, or at least the realization I wanted to pursue science really, really young. And somehow cannabis... Um, over my upbringing kept coming into my life, um, mostly through family, believe it or not. Um, so it started in a very helpful and helpful place. And as I, as I grew up, went through high school, went into university, um, I discovered this thing called the endocannabinoid system and how that really was the answer behind why and how this plant works so well for so many of us. So I dove in in college, had a great mentor that studied the endocannabinoid system, allowed me to do, um, you know, preclinical uh, testing work with cannabinoids and the ECS, uh, the endocannabinoid system, um, and found myself at the end of university being very well positioned to enter the emerging legal medical and recreational cannabis space. And it's just, it's been an incredible journey. Um, the pursuit of science coupled with the ability to help people with a natural product has kept me invigorated and, and will for the rest of my life. I mean, this is what I want to do, what I've been privileged and humbled to do. Um, and my time here at Jim Canna has taken it from, you know, a small lab scale to true agronomic and industrial scale. And along the way, we've attempted to make it as normal as possible. Uh, to your point about the lip balm, um, I didn't really envision that years ago, although in the early days of Colorado legalization, we saw <laughs> Slurpees, cotton candy, you know, cannabis infused into everything. Um, so I, I knew that was possible. The, the global acceptance in consumer packaged goods, you know, can, cannabinoids have a place. And so um, my time here has been dedicated to normalization of CBD and hemp derived cannabinoids by positioning the firm, our processes, our people, our products against existing regulatory frameworks to say, look, we can follow the rules just like anybody else. You make soap, you make sugar, you make vitamin C, we make CBD. 
you know, it's all written down. It's all transparent. And I think that's part of the mystery, right? The, the consumer does not have a understanding of the black boxes between the farm and what they are actually using. And we have sought to make that uh, a transparent and respectable process. And I think we've done really well for it. Like you said, billions of milligrams um, have made it to people's homes and to their mouths and to their bodies safely. And that, that was the primary goal. You, you cannot do this work in a predictable and sustainable fashion without starting at the farm and understanding the end, um, with it, which is consumption. When you started growing in Kentucky, had they just opened up Kentucky or were there already farms that were growing there? So we knew from my time in Colorado and some very humbling and special experiences with children with pediatric epilepsy that uh, there was a true unmet need and a true um, uh, demand that had just started to be realized. And we knew that we had to get outside. We knew we had to farm because it's just a scale issue, right? We can't be trapped in warehouses, retrofit to grow cannabis and, and grow uh, hundreds of thousands of kilos of product. It just doesn't work. And so we looked for jurisdictions that had either existing laws on the books or were well poised to make that leap. And when the farm bill passed in 2014, which allowed state departments of agriculture and universities to start to research industrial hemp, Kentucky was top of mind. They had a law in the books that said, as soon as the feds pass this law, we're ready to go. And the Department of Agriculture said, come, let's grow a new crop together and figure it out. Plant plants first, ask questions later. That's so that's that's pretty cool. So basically, you were almost groundbreakers in, in Kentucky as well. It wasn't even like that. Because that's the issue in the UK. The issue in the UK is that there's so much uncertainty. So you said, you know, like, basically check the black boxes, all right? At least you have black boxes to check. You know, you have these you, you have these boxes. They might be a pain in the ass. And there might be a thousand subcategories underneath it. But unfortunately, in the UK and in Europe, as you know, we were discussing earlier in the week and we've discussed over the last five, six weeks with, you know, with Jamie and with, uh, with, uh, Quentin from Spectrums and with, uh, with George, with, with, with all these different farmers with Alex last week, you know, we've, I, I, the, the, the boxes aren't there. The framework is okay. So you almost have like, you almost have like the page saying checklist, but there's nothing on the checklist yet. That doesn't mean there's nothing on the checklist. It means there's nothing there yet. You know what I mean? well, and, and we have been privileged to help make that checklist, you know, um, either ourselves or through lobbying efforts. You know, we've brought regulators and enforcement officials to our facilities time and time again to say, look, this is how we do this. There's no secrets here. Um, I've hosted large delegations from the USDA, the FBI, the DEA, the sheriff's department, the cops, the judges, the clerks. I mean, and it's it's nerve wracking from time to time because these are the people that have been on the other side of the coin. They want nothing more than what everyone wants, which is to help each other be healthful and frankly, when they have those experiences with cannabis, Generally, medical, rec, hemp derived, you know, I'm going to blur some lines here, although our business is very focused on uh, what is federally legal and compliant here in the States and worldwide. Um, when people have that experience, it changes their minds and it changes their lives. And what do they do? They seek that solution over time. And I thought, you know, what better way than to get outside and do this at scale and build refinement facilities and formulations facilities and testing facilities that validated all of that work and allowed us to change people's lives. Uh, so, and our Italian friends, right? They, they've got the ECS too. So, so, so Kentucky, uh, in Kentucky, when, when you kind of brought this, you know, like we started growing, I assume you almost, you know, created jobs, created an infrastructure. I assume that these farms, you, you didn't go and cut down a whole bunch of tomato fields and start growing hemp. I assume the farms were, you know, unused agricultural land and you almost brought a purpose back to, you know, back to an area which was well, purposeless yes. before. 
not no. saying Kentucky's purpose because it has the best bourbon in the world. If it ain't from Kentucky, you can't call it bourbon. There are enough things of you know. I I like Kentucky. Okay, you know what I mean. I, I I'm a big fan. I don't mean that in a negative way. Just talking about like in terms of boosting economies. I assume you guys did that, right? Well, let's get farmers a purpose. There's risk in this. Now, what is that's that's Russ? Come on, that's Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, but we're we're from it's, London, so we assume that like saying. Kentucky and Tennessee is like Croydon and Peckham. You could get there in, <laughs> in 10 minutes. <laughs> it's probably 8 uh, billion miles away. I know. There's only one color of blue here. I'll, I'll tell you that much. What does uh, that mean? There's one color. What is, ooh, that's a good. Kentucky, what does that mean? Kentucky Wildcats. So years ago, uh, they're absolutely here. We are fanatics for the Kentucky Wildcats. And and that's a certain shade. Is of that blue. baseball? Oh, football? Right. What, what, forgive us. Rugby. Rugby. <laughs> that is. is it tennis? Golf? Golf, it's cricket it's team. Tennis it. is definitely tennis. Chess is chess. definitely a chess, chess team. <laughs> it's a local chess, chess team. team. The local debating squad. No? <laughs> roller derby. Roller That's derby. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, roll, it's definitely roller derby. I, I, I saw a documentary <laughs> on this. The, no, some, some fans are going to come set fire to my house. This is not good. Like the Wildcats like, of London are going to come kill me. Yeah. I love you, Wildcats. Go, Cats. Oh, okay. that's yeah. great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, we're fine. Go no, no, it's good. It's good. It's just there's there's definitely pride, just like with football. Like there are lines here that you don't cross. And I, I showed up I showed up to a meeting with a uh more of a North Carolina blue on, not a deep Kentucky Wildcat blue on. And uh, I got some looks. I got some uh -huh. looks. I'm joking. I tell you what, Chris. Chris, when you come, when the you come to, you next to come learn. to the UK, when you next come to the UK, and we'll all hook up, you can come to near where I am, and there's there a, a charming and elegant football club called Millwall. Millwall. That, Millwall. That, and what I'm going to do is awesome. I'm going to take you into the local pub, Chris. Nice as the people. Millwall supporters, and you're going to go, "Come on, Arsenal!" And then or, Ollie and I are going to run. We're going to teach you a song. We're going to teach you a song. It's called Forever Blowing Bubbles. Okay. And you're going to walk into Millwall singing, I'm forever blowing bubbles, pretty bubbles in the air. We fly so high, they reach the sky. No, seriously, it's football hooliganism. How long do you football think Chris would be alive? If he did I, I, to be honest with you, he, he, he looks pretty scrappy. He looks pretty yeah, scrappy. He doesn't. I think he'll be okay. He's a Millwall supporter who doesn't. He's farm strong. Do you not understand this? He's farm doesn't strong. He's a Millwall scientist. Supporters. I'm a, yeah, I was going to say I'm nerd strong. There's a difference between farm strong. And listen, all credit due to the team, right? This is not this is not just a me thing. This is an incredible effort that takes a lot of uh, a lot of time, countless hours. I mean, you spoke with one of my colleagues the other and, day. Alex. And, he, and we're going to bring this guy on. This guy's called uh, yeah. Chris Macaluso. Is that right? Did I pronounce that right? Macaluso? That's right. And yeah, he, Chris Macaluso. He is okay. an incredible green-blooded farmer we're going to bring him on in a few weeks time uh i basically i i chat with them together and i was like we need to split this there's there's too much going on uh but the, yeah so so chris will be here in a few weeks time and it, he really is just like his brain is just like whoa it's like a you know like Imagine. a 20 ma like a magical botanist he's like a botany <laughs> wizard you know and like gandalf the botanist you, you know it's brains together and you've got gen canna exactly. you've got global supply of cannabinoids i mean it's, it's been a, a very humbling experience and to your question um we, we 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 didn't do this all ourselves right there was a clear unmet need and still is in farming we just so happen to be oversupplied at the moment um but tobacco farms here there, there's people for generations that have been struggling and looking for new crops, and they still are. Hemp is not the only answer, but it's certainly a viable one over time. And and we're in this very volatile period where demand and supply and regulations and and, and global compliance is is still maturing. Um, and so what we did was say, look, you guys know your farms the best. We know cannabis really well. Why don't we put two and two together and help each other successfully grow this crop so that when we extract it and we refine it and we formulate with it and we come ask for accreditation of our facilities and our farms. It's the same. It's the same next quarter. It's the same next crop year, right? How, how is Procter & Gamble going to say, sure, I'll put this in my product if it's, I know you, mean. you know, different, different, different. different.
So we've been able to normalize that. And if it what the farmers here in Kentucky, what we have previously monikered the certified farming network, have been just an amazing group of folks that um, have, have been able to bring this to life. And it has allowed us to move downstream and get this into places like the UK by engineering compliance from the very start. Let's rewind a little can, bit. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 go on, Ross. Ask your question, because, and then I'm going to I'm rewind. A, I'm a real outsider to this because, you know, Ollie, I've just been a passenger when, when I first was introduced to Ollie, and I thought, okay, I know nothing about this subject. So the last 22 weeks have been dazzling for me. It's now he's an active CBD user. I, absolutely. I know, so fantastic. is his doggy, and so is his and dog. doggy as well. Exactly. Proper anyway. family CBD family. <laughs> I love it. The point I was going to make, uh, uh, Chris, is the way that I understand this idea of, of consistency, and this may seem silly, but it, uh, it will make sense, is that um, my, my guilty pleasure are, are Cuban cigars from Havana. I know in America Hi. that's a problem, but not, in, not over here in London. And yeah. if you don't get that consistency of the leaf, if you don't get that consistency of the tobacco from the great tobacco growers of the Havana cigar industry, you know, it causes a huge furore. And, you know, the word gets out, don't have XYZ companies this year because it's just, it's not good. So I totally understand what you're, I totally understand what you're getting if it doesn't sound, sound too tangential. Well, it's and also, it's, it's not only sorry, that, no, it's, 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 thanks. It's, um, it's really, there's a, has to be an understanding of one, the scale that you're operating at, how you validate each part of that process and where your levers are, right? You might have something that goes wrong in the field. You might have something that doesn't quite meet, um, you know, to the nines, but we have ways of pulling levers and ensuring that, hey, you know, the output remains the same once again. And that's particularly true with purified compounds, but you know, standardizing extracts is very possible too, so that we we maintain that level playing field. And that's that's where I think I think Ollie would agree with me. There are certain companies and people that do parts of this really, really well. And we've had to refocus our own efforts to do parts of it really, really well. Um, it's rare to find a much more holistic approach where everything's done really, really well, wherever you do it. Um, but I and our team are not the kind of people to say, we've done it, it's all over, right? This is still maturing and the pursuit of science and the scientific method is knowledge and truth. Absolutely. And there's still a lot more to learn, brothers. A lot more Let to Let me go. just say, uh, we, we have a very interactive show here, Chris. So Michael Adair is saying, Lord Science, when he saw oh. you. So that, that's cool. Uh, Luke Francis, yeah. shout out to Chris and our friends across the pond. Thank you all, which is lovely. Now, a regular to men's radio, and this, this is the sort of effect that you guys are having. This is a chap called Barry J. Allen, not The Flash, but we always call him The Flash. Barry Allen. Uh, I love and when he's on the other show, when he's on the Daily Show, we always play the theme tune from Flash by Quinn. Um, anyway, here's a question. Now, I've replied, but I'd like you're the experts and I'm just the passenger. Barry Allen says here, here's a question. Three years ago, I had a brain tumor removed. I've still got a bit of it left. Presumably that's a tumor, not your brain now, um, Barry. And it's being watched. But ever since, my sleep is terrible. Would this help? Sorry to disturb you, Russ. You're not disturbing ever. Never disturbing. No comments are ever disturbing. We love having your comments. I've written back and said, yeah, I'm sure it would. But I'd like to hear it from an expert. Like, You know, I'm just a punter. So, Chris. So I, I'm going to have to be a little ambiguous here, and I apologize for that, because with my position and what we do in the regulatory environment that, that we're subject to here and even there as manufacturers, mm -hmm. I can't make a claim on the product, right? Fair enough. Can't market it in this way, but I will say something. All I can say. <laughs> no, I, I was going to finish your point and then like, like I, 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 I'll talk to the dudes. I think that the, the short answer is most definitely, probably, you know, you can't figure it out for yourself until you have a product you can rely on. And that's the key with Oliver's approach. That's the key with our approach is saying, yep. here's a product that could potentially help you. Now, 
we're going to give you some guidance on how to figure that out. Because frankly, some folks are sensitive to CBD uh, like they are to caffeine. And they have to figure, you know, I've taken it no past eight o'clock in the morning uh, or it's going to mess up my circadian rhythm. Um, others like me, I can drink espresso and go to sleep. I don't know what to do. It's, it's a weird it's deal, right? right? Um, and so you have to, and this is what we did. Is that not normal? Like espresso and then bed. I thought everyone does that. It's like a standard, right? It's, 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 Double it's, espresso, go to sleep. I know a lot of people that don't do that. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Very strange. Never, Cappuccino never, before never. bed is like a normal, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I begin to see why we let we get on on this show. Yeah, we go. There we are. The hyperness. <laughs> no, so we. listen. Let me let me take this. Okay. Yeah. I would always say, why are you not sleeping? Because if you're not sleeping because of immense amounts of pain, that's one thing. If you're not sleeping because of stress, that's another thing. If you're not sleeping because of anxiety, it's something else. If you're not sleeping because you don't want to sleep because you've got a fear of sleeping, that's another thing completely. And if you're not sleeping because your bed's uncomfortable, that's also something else. Now, it's all about understanding what the reasons are. Now, I don't mean to sound like it sounds rude. But it's the same conversation I had with Russ. I was like, if you are, if you have issues related to anxiety, overthought, over, like over stress, there yeah. are, there, there, there are studies, there are, uh, there are hundreds of thousands of people who have used CBD for anxiety based reasons. I can't tell you that the product will work, but I'm saying the chances are it will because everyone who seems to use CBD for anxiety seems to get a benefit. The issue is, is that you've mentioned tumor. And because you mentioned tumor, it's got me thinking that I don't want you thinking that I can say CBD will be able to cure your tumor. Do you understand what I mean? I don't no, want to say that. that. No, no, okay. No, no, no. And 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 if you're not sleeping because of something the tumor is doing to your brain, I also don't know if CBD will help with that. I really don't know. I know that it would like for me when I'm anxious, CBD helps me sleep. I use other ingredients on top of it. I'll use terpenes and I'll use like a lavender or a lilanol and I'll use some form of chamomile or something like that in order to give it a bit more of a softness. Add it to my double espresso, sleep like a baby. Do you know what I mean? But it's um, like, I, I'm saying that's the conversation. If you want to send me an email, man, I'll very happily chat with you. And to be honest with you, I'll send you a bottle for free just to mess around. I'll make you something like I made Russ. I, I, it's, it's it's fun for me. And then if it works, we, we know the answer to your question. Until like you try it and you let me know, you're the only one who can really answer your question. I can just facilitate that answer in the most affordable way possible. Do you understand and what I mean? That's probably respect, the best way of doing you would it. Not get, you wouldn't get this on any I'm, – I'm serious, and I'm not giving myself a hernia by patting myself on the back. But you wouldn't get this sort of level of care on any other radio station. You wouldn't. You know, Barry has been really loyal to us, and Ollie, that's a really lovely thing to do. No, it's, so, it, I mean, it's, but that's the easiest suggest, way. But like yeah, I said to you, it it's the go. same. Look, you, you, know, you just it, said to me – You can't hurt. Look – like, like I'm saying, I just gave your dog something for, for something he's got. I've got no idea if it's going to help him or not. But the only way we're ever going to find out if this compound helps that issue is if we try that compound she's on been, that issue. She's so, been like a puppy. She's 12. I want to rewind something. Like this is very important because I want to discuss this. So I don't know. I'm going to let Chris tell this story, okay? And I'm going to let him tell him whichever detail he wants. But he, he touched upon this. When you were living in Colorado, you 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 you, you formulated products for, for and you helped people who were who were not well, right? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk is. about that? I, I can. Absolutely. Be because um, it's, it's 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 all about the understanding, you know, like it's. Yeah. Like I said, this, like, like I always ask this question, like, why do you do what you do? You know, I ask you what your driving force is, but I mean, like, why do you do what you do? I do what I do because I found that CBD really helped me, me as a person with my twitches, with my Tourette's, with my general Oliverness. I found it really helped me. Okay. Uh, and I found that CBD has helped other people. And I like understanding how a CBD product can help you with other ingredients, which are added to it in order to give you the di desired effect. I like creating products for the purpose. That's why I'm here. Why are you here? Do you understand? I, 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 I think people need to know that. Yeah, very similar. And I think when you couple that with the pursuit of science, truth, knowledge, and, and you're able to play with plants, play with equipment, to play with testing and analytics and see that impact in, in humans and animals, your cup stays full, as I say, right? And that's a really nice feeling yeah. um 
So yeah, back back in Colorado, this is in the medical cannabis you know days, right when this this whole thing first started. I was asked to build a laboratory um, to test the amount of cannabinoids in the plants, in the extracts, in the finished goods. And at that time, the understanding of these molecules and their chemical and physical properties was abysmal. And so you had folks you know, fighting the oil and water problem, which we still fight today. There are oils. I want to put them in waters. It doesn't mix. It sticks to the container. It's just just a mess, right? So I got to experience the birth of an industry and the birth of brands and the birth of product types that you've referenced and now do extremely well, Ollie. I mean, it's um, it had to start in that place with us knowing what was in the product. Um, so this goes on for a few years and I'm able to help a lot of people as, as a scientist by saying, uh, this grower is real. This extract is real. It's going to be here tomorrow. You know what I mean? If you find a solution for someone and then it's not a solution tomorrow, that's an issue. <laughs> so this is a theme, right? Sustainable, sustainability. Um, so years on, I meet a group of growers, um, a group of brothers, um, the brothers Stanley, who um, brought in a, a, a bunch of cannabis strains, um, and some of which tested very high in CBD and very low in THC. And around this same time, a couple of weeks prior, I had met um, a, a very young girl named Charlotte, who is the um, the poster child for CBD. She was the girl who started it all. She was like the the the, the first media campaign who brought CBD as a as a as an anti epileptic compound. Right. You know that she was like she she is the 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 educational platform which a lot of our world has been built on. You know, kids like Tanin, uh, kids like Tanine's daughter. It wouldn't surprise me if Tanine only knows about this because of Charlotte. You know, like. It's it's sorry sorry for interrupting. That that's that that's right. It's, I mean, her story sparked the demand and the curiosity. Um, can this help me? You know. Um, so long story short, I, I spent a considerable amount of time with her and her parents one afternoon discussing CBD and whether it was an option, um, where they could find it, how they could test it. Um, was it going to be psychoactive or toxic or interfere with the other drugs she was on? And the answer is very similar to the previous answer with, with the sleeplessness. There's only one way to find out. So let's help you find out. So I, you know, having tested the, the brother strains and worked them through the process of how to extract and how to refine and test the extracts and normalize everything. Um, I made her first tincture. Um, and a few weeks later, we started to see results. And a few weeks after that, the message started to grow. And months after that, I was on a podcast just like this, talking about it <laughs> uh, with the brothers. And, and then CNN publicizes it. And there's now tens of thousands of people on a waiting list trying to get access to this product. Dr. Sanjay Gupta did that, like he did that special. I think it's got something like 63 million views on YouTube or something insane like that. You know, most people who un who most people who know anything about CBD know about the story of Charlotte and Charlotte's Web. You know, yeah. it's like that story. It's it's, it's it's Chris did the formulation. You know, this dude's the man. Like he's the absolute man. Do you understand? Like it's hence my emotion at the start. This like you can't think of this dude. You can't be in this industry and not think of. Mr. Dude right here and, and not get a little bit emotional. Do you know what I mean? It's incredible. It's true. And it's, and yeah, I cannot take, you know, again, it's a team effort. Again, there was an unmet, unmet need again. You know, it's, it's, I was at ground zero and, and did so much of this testing work to call BS and say what's real and help people find their solutions and iterating on this same thing over and over again and then saying you know what let's take this outside let's go big um that will there will never be another waiting list again you know that was the inspiration and i don't know brothers it's, it's been a, a very humbling experience and 
the, you know, every business has its challenges. Every individual has their challenges. Um, I mean, you all you've talked about regulatory, that's extremely challenging. But we've now seen acceptance of this product, of this molecule and all its other friend, friendly molecules um, just grow and grow over time. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very humbling work. And we call it stewardship. We have to be good stewards of this work um, because all, all eyes are on us, right? There are people that want us to fail uh, for, for a number of reasons. I mean, we've had our own business struggles. Most people who are your competitors, want you, like your colleagues want you to fail, let alone your, like, the people outside the industry. I mean, yeah. it's one of the hardest industries to circumnavigate. I mean, you've got, you've got cutthroats and villains within. You've got cutthroats and villains on the outside. You've got the law. You've got <laughs> you, but when, you, when you're afraid of the law, you're afraid of your compet uh, competitors. I mean, look, I've been in the industry for five years now, five, six years. Okay, five years properly, you know. And over the last five years, the amount of different law changes, which I have just seen happen. So, I mean, there was a three-year period between 2018 and 2021 where isolate was banned in foods. It wasn't, but that was like the law in the UK. If you're, if you're caught using isolate in food, you know, your brand's going to get shut down. It wasn't a law, but that was one of the laws. Do you know what I mean? And now they've come out and said, actually, if you're using a full spectrum, the chances are it contains THC, the chances are it's illegal. It's actually, you know, to be honest with you, I don't think you're going to be able to get through novel food with that. So all the laws have now then spun on its head. And now imagine what that does for business. You create a product, people get used to it. Then you have to change it out of fear that you're actually doing something wrong and your clients are breaking the law. So then you change it. You go through that whole process of, hey, guys, I had to change the product for your protection, for my protection, blah, blah, blah. They don't like the product. You lose all your clients. You get a whole bunch of new clients, okay? And then what happens is you find out you never had to change in the first place. But that was just, that's the, the, these are the laws that get thrown at you, you know? That's a, a really interesting point, I, I think, because we had this debate years ago at Jim Cannon. Was it full spec? Was it isolate? Does the entourage effect, which is the combination of multiple cannabinoids and terpenes working together, you know, is that better than isolate? In my case was, guess what? We can do both. And we can do it in a bunch of different formats because guess what else? Everything has its purpose. Exactly. And there are people in this world that can't have any THC in their bloodstream and there are people that can swim in it. So let's build a, <laughs> you like that one, Russ? Yes. Send me a swimming pool. Show I me the swimming pool. These, I'll dive head first. these phrases. They're fantastic. So we, we thought build the foundation, you know, build the platform, what we call the Gincana production platform to be flexible, to be predictable, to be able to change as laws change. And now with our interaction with, with our friends across the pond, you know, there's, there's different levels, what we call, you know, THC free or broad spe spectrum here. You guys have a very, it's a hard number. And they're, they're trying to log Zero point zero two, but now it's going down to one milligram a container. Now one milligram a container, they're not specifying container. It's like if someone asks you for a bucket of cake, you're like, sorry, what's the bucket of cake? Like, how do you, how do you contemplate a figure of an, uh, how can you contemplate a, a, a weight or a measure without being given a weight or a measure? So it's like saying, saying, how much, they... how much does, how much does a bucket of bricks weigh? Sorry, sorry, what? You know, like, uh, <laughs> are you serious? Three. It's that vague. It's it, well, actually, so UK vague. law, UK law, UK it's law is so focused. vague. Apparently, so, I found out something new last week. CBD as an edible is fully illegal in Europe. Apparently, I've illegal. only found out from some people, it's and apparently, illegal. Has, to, illegal. has to be synthesized. So I heard it from one person, but apparently, it's facts. And he showed me a document which looked pretty real. So now I'm sitting there like, oh my god, like a whole bunch of there go the laws, you know? Like, Ooh, Chris, like, I'd like I'd like to ask a couple of questions, if if I may, wearing firmly wearing my punter's hat, as we say. Yeah, uh, yeah. Number one. Um, you, you've alluded to your company and everything like this. So I know Ollie's clearly in awe of it, which sounds great because if he's, he's impressed, I'm impressed. How, how many people have you got? I mean, how many people are involved in the organization? Uh, we're around 50 at the moment. Okay. Um, that's, we have that's, been that's good. As about six times that. 
and which just speaks to the volatility of the industry. It's extremely unpredictable. We all have risk. I've lost my ass a couple times, uh, but I'm here. I mean, there, there's, <laughs> there's nothing better than being able to passionately do what you want to do. Totally. Uh, and there are days when I sit down at the end of the day with a very tall glass of bourbon and say, Ugh! and there are other days where I'm just like, this was great. So uh, this is called life, right, Russ? It's yeah, it is. It is. By the way, I've got to come back to the bourbon thing. I was at a, at a, at a meeting, which was a sort of social thing. And I'm sitting next to this guy and he's coming from America. It was Mr. Beam, as in Jim Beam. He was the last of the, he was the last, like, one of the last in the family. Most nice. charming guy. Yeah, charming good. guy. Did he um, speak with other, a beautiful southern accent? He, he was he was delightful. Um, and, and 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 like yourself, Chris, incredibly you know, south, pers- done all this and just incredibly modest and you know low key about. It. Americans are the best. When you find the good Americans, I mean, they're just <laughs> awesome. You know, like the <laughs> sets are wearing all, the sets are wearing. Like, like, million of them. <laughs> you know, good, I, mean, I just love it. I, love right. it. I, I can agree. My daughter's American, so there we go. Now. Um, another question I've got for you. One of the things which has stunned me, and it's mm-hmm. been my education that Ollie has taken me through, metaphorically holding my hand. And I just want to ask you this, Chris. I have been amazed that when you've got especially children, babies, little kids, and then we had someone who was 81, and clearly the CBD is improving their quality of life. There's no ifs or buts. It is. Okay. And yet there's this huge resistance to letting them just, you know, they're not selling not it, CBD, they're not THG, dealing Russ. it. Russ, uh, yep. uh, what's it called? Philip, Philip was using a, a, a full a, yes. a full cannabis. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. so, 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 so CBD is fully legal, but 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 the, the, the epileptic kids, they're, they're using a, a, a majority CBD blend. I mean, it has yeah. negligible amounts of, of, of THC in it, and they are still... You know, the hoops they've got to jump through to get that yes, CBD that, product insane. The point. I just want to thought I'd correct you, but carry on, Russ. I'm no, sorry. No, you're quite no, you're quite right. And thank you for that, because we do want to be legal about it. But my question to you is this, Chris. Um, in um in America, is there still this sort of pushback from no no no, you've got to have, you know, big pharma, you've got to have the pharmaceuticals. We don't we don't recognize this as being helpful. So <sighs> It changes every day and it's changed greatly over time. And I've, I frankly have been flabbergasted. I myself have testified, you know, in, in state senates and houses and rulemaking committees where, you know, the law is about to change. There's a proposal in front to regulate the industry. And this particular example is in medical cannabis, but I, it, it floored me, Russ, because you have the chief of police association there to lobby against the bill. And I'm there to say, look, we can practically figure this out together. And by the way, you guys already decriminalized the possession of an ounce or less. So running a red light is more egregious than having an ounce of weed. And now you're going to sit here and tell us that we can't, you know, meaningfully produce something. After the hearing, the head of the chief of police association comes up and says, so my dad's pretty sick. And I'm wondering if you can get me something. This yeah, is what we're here to discuss, man. So times <laughs> are a changing, and the FDA here um, has not made up their mind quite yet on what the definitions should be. But they are actively regulating the industry. Our state Department of Health and our state regulators have been extremely um, excited about, yet responsible with how they regulate us. And the FDA, I think, is 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 looking to um, novel foods as a very interesting way of doing this, right? Uh, their concerns are about safety of the products. And my argument to this is, look, if we can demonstrate some safety and we can demonstrate that we can produce these products in accordance with what we call good manufacturing practices, which exist for foods, Another set exists for supplements and another set, even more stringent, exists for pharmaceutical production. So if we know how the product is grown and produced and and it's very um, well documented and controlled, um, then you've got the answer, right? You can say it's safe, 
faithfully produced and uh, resoundingly similar batch to batch and lot to lot. You have mechanisms to recall a product if you had to. What I'm saying is we normalize this just like everything else people take. Vitamin C supplement, what's the big deal? You know, uh, this should be no different. And so we have invested very heavily in um, toxicology work and stability work to show that these products are safe and that there's no arsenic or lead or residual solvents or microbiology concerns with the ingredient that Ollie might use to formulate and with the finished goods that Ollie formulates. As an example, we have to test, we spend more damn money on testing than you would believe. You probably spend more money on testing than you do on anything else. We we worked out that that the amount of money we spent on test on testing we could have bought a Tesla, okay. And then when you figure that out, you're like, oh my god, should have just not tested anything. Been rolling around in a Tesla, I would have been happier, okay. This is the way of the world. You have to ease those concerns. And so what we we have uh, become BRCGS accredited, which you all might recognize more than a lot of our folks here, but it dictates a logical risk-based approach to your internal standards. And every year an auditor shows up, there's one due here uh, just in a couple of weeks, and they give you the ringer for two, three days. If there's an issue, they're gonna find it and they'll take your accreditation. Mm -hmm. uh, but the purpose of those independent third-party accreditations, Russ, is to say, look, we can do this and we can change minds. There's always going to be sentiment against it, just like there was with prohibition of alcohol, right? Yeah. People have their strange notions, religious, spiritual, political, otherwise bad personal experiences. Uh, but when the evidence really builds and builds and builds, time's going to change. If you, if you actually thought about it, I mean, so like as someone who's watched the CBD industry, you know, grow in the UK, and to be honest with you, I... Like having my brother in America, I watched the, the the cannabis industry over the last ten years grow as well. And as someone like you, who's who's watched the cannabis industry grow over the last twenty years, I mean, I kind of like the fact that these protocols are being brought in. It's like it makes me think that one day you will be able to walk into a Walmart, a Tesco, and ASDA. All right, Tesco, ASDA is our equivalent of Walmart. Walk up to the pharmaceutical section, you know, where they've got your ibuprofen and your paracetamol just sitting there on the shelf, and you'll have your ibuprofen, paracetamol, CBD, you know? That's precisely how this is. Cannabidiol. We, we, um, the API been... idea. This is what you were saying. And that, like, like it's, it's the right way, you know, like, like who wants a bathroom formulated product? You know, who wants something that's made in a kitchen with doggies running around? I mean, like, who wants that? You know, right. like, like, like it's it's insane, but that's what the market's been built on. But I like this idea of you know grassrooted people stepping it up a notch because we can. There's no reason we can't. You know, if everyone mm. else can, there's like we can also we? bring bring yeah. that quality. You know, so that's that's essentially what we've seen manifest itself as ingredient suppliers, as formulators, as um, someone that we contract manufacturers as well. Like we 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 can't do it all. There are pros that make say a soft gel capsule, as an example. Why build a facility just to do that when there are pros? It was about convincing them that our ingredient was legal, compliant, well-characterized, and able to be brought into their facility so that they could make the soft gel that could then be in the grocery store pharmacy over the counter. Um, the same is true for those retailers and for those brands. They show up and do a vendor approval audit and give us the business for two or three days and tour the site and go through all of our documents to say, you know what, this is real backwards and forwards. And the risk associated with this ingredient or this product is low enough for us to incorporate it into our finished goods and thereby increase access to quality cannabinoids. That's my mission in life, increasing access to quality cannabinoids and without well, listen, work and building the foundation you you can't do that so you're doing well man that's all i want to say is you're doing well like, like i've seen your footprint and fact of the matter is is 
there's this consistency, which I'm going to go on to again. It all starts with this consistency. In order to end up with that final product coming out of the capsule maker, which is perfect, and every capsule is exactly 25 milligrams, and you've given them an SOP to follow the math, you've given them an extract to go with that SOP. If that extract isn't what you say it is, then no matter how much you follow the math, you're never going to come up with the right product. And it's, it's so it's all about the starting foundation of the extracts we use. And, you know, like being able to dream big and think, you know, one day I'm going to be able to walk into any shop and there will just be CBD on the shelf as a standard, not some 75 pound, a thousand milligram, which you know is extortionately priced. You know, you know, you know, it's insane. You know that it's market manipulation and corruption, like a standard product, which anyone can use. I mean, like, like you need to have this, this standardization, this compliance, this consistency, this this reputation for being reliable in order for the companies to even humor the idea, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's, you touched on something that I still, I still struggle with because I, I, I see these product launch press releases and I see the retailers and the online sales uh, promotions. And I don't understand if you're in need, how you can afford some of the products out there. And that's precisely coming goal precisely. is to make that change because I just, it's all for naught if you can't actually buy it. Right. So I think we work as an industry to make that more affordable, more accessible. Um, it's going to happen naturally anyway, but I, everything happens I, with I'm time. Too. Our CEO is going to kill me. <laughs> the, more, the, the more it's accepted, the more it's accepted by the general population, the more you can produce, you know, the cheaper the price will come down. The more, you know, a lot of money is spent almost educating and, you know, almost fighting this resistance, you know, like 30 quid in every tincture is probably spent convincing people that they need that tincture. As soon as people don't need the convincing anymore, the prices will come crashing down. It's like if you had to tell someone they need an ibuprofen every time they needed, they had a headache, ibuprofen mm. would be 16, 17 pounds a packet if that much marketing had to go That's in behind fun. it, if that much yeah. education had to go behind it. So like, I don't want to say the 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 users are making it difficult but if there were more users taking this on who were educating other users so brands didn't have to market then they wouldn't have the excuse for why the price was so high because that's always the, the excuse for every product being expensive on the marketplace is oh it's branding because branding right. costs money you know like marketing costs money seo costs money part of my thought on this too is how many how many times is the ingredient brokered and test oh so many times very costs are there in oh, oh it is what you say it is okay well i'm gonna test it and then, thousand percent oh, no, no, it crosses 16 hands before it gets to someone like you or someone like us who, who formulates yeah. it it's it's crazy but it is normalizing russ i mean to your question it is getting more and more normal by the day you just have to I mean, the more we are able to directly interact with regulators, directly interact with producers and consumers, you, you, you just start to thread it all together. So this is a new common understanding of what we're doing. And that's what we seek to do is, is educate. Well, I want, I want you to know the effect you're having on our, uh, our listeners and people viewing. Uh, Ed Grossman, Russ, this is a very seriously great show. So Amazing! I love compliments. I think it was aimed. At, it was aimed in Kentucky, wasn't it? I don't care. I'm, I'm taking it, man. I'm taking it. <laughs> That's One great. of the things, Chris, and and you are an, You're an awesome. absolute exemplar of this, is that I had no idea the sort of folk that Ollie Mammon was going to bring onto the show. I mean, I was full of trepidation. It's not an area I know anything about. So, as I said, 22 weeks has been a rocket ride for me. <laughs> everyone who comes on is so erudite is so articulate is so passionate is so genuine and and it comes from and i know this sounds ridiculous but it comes from a good place it's not right. about just making money it's coming from a good place and that's what's so that's what's so fantastic that really well, is you it's know? a great I really appreciate that. Um, I mean, I, I, I think I spoke with Ollie for all of 2.7 minutes before I was like, this is a brother. 
you know, it's like you can ink with these people so easily. And there are potholes, as we, we would say out there. There are people that are opportunistic and, and taking advantage of every angle. But what we say as, as industry stewards um, will be here at the end of every day. And, and we're that's gonna- a beautiful way to leave this show. Chris Stubbs, all the way from Kentucky. I'm so excited. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us. Ollie I Norman, love that beautiful as prose. Al- always, as always, it's a pleasure. Till next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thank guys. You. Thanks.